Welcome everyone! In this video I'm going to show you how I leveled up my Julis to be an Explosive Arrow Ballista Champion. So as many of you know Explosive Arrow got a big buff in the Arc Nemesis League and for that me and many others wanted to make it to our League Starter. Most went with the Witch and others with the Hierophant but I want to go for the more tankier route so I picked the Champion as our Ascendancy. I will put timestamps in the description so it's easy for you to follow what you need to do and what stuff to get for each act. But for now let's start with what skills we are going to use for this leveling guide and also a bit how it all works. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this guide helpful and with that out of the way let's begin. We are mainly going to use the Caustic Arrow and also the Toxic Rain with Ballista support in this playthrough. So let's go over how this works. Caustic Arrow is a level 1 skill that we are going to use from the beginning, making a smaller area of damage over time. It does have a percentage converting physical to chaos, but we don't need to care about that at all. All that we want is the damage over time. This skill will mainly be as an extra skill, while the Toxic Rain Ballistas handles the rest. And for the Toxic Rain is a level 12 skill that got a huge area that it covers, also dealing chaos damage over time, and it will also make enemy slowed, which helps. Combining this with the Ballista support makes it so it will auto-target enemies, and it will make it so you most of the time just have to place down a totem and continue running. Both of these skills are really awesome skills to start leveling with, uh, when you don't really have any items, perfect for a league start. You don't have to rely on getting a new bow, the best bow you can get is the short bow, which you will get at level 1 from the vendor, and the reason it is the best choice is because of its base attack speed, which is 1.5, which is the fastest one you can get. You don't need to think about anything else except maybe getting attack speed on your bow later on if you want to gain some extra damage. If this is not your first character and maybe you got a couple of chaos to spend on uniques to ease your playthrough, I will put up a very basic starter pack of uniques if you would like to speed up the leveling process. First up is Tabula, easy sex link, everyone's favorite body armor early on. And for the helm slot, we got the gold rim for all of the extra elemental resist it provides. And for the boots, we are using the wanderlust for the extra movement speed and cannot be frozen. For the gloves, we use the loctonial caress, providing attack speed and life. For the quiller, we have a high risk buy for a lot of attributes, attack speed and also life gain on hit, which helps a bit. And for our weapon, we can go with the quill rain bow which will be the best slot for a very long time, even after we get to maps. This bow got the highest attack speeds per second in the game, but a cost of some damage. And for the belt, amulet and ring slots, I usually like to have them empty so I can keep changing them for different resists that I would need, maybe some more life, stuff like that. But if you want to max out, could put some different uniques as well. For the belt, Worms Molt for some more stats and some leech. Amulet, Araku Tiki for some life and regen. Or you could go for the Cure Reward for more move speed and damage. For the ring slots, Black Hearts gives some life and regen and also some damage early on. And at level 22, you could go for two Praxis Rings. Just so you don't have to think about your mana sustain which is really useful early on. And for the links, I will put up all of the skills and the links that we are going to use here for this leveling guide. Just if someone do, for instance, have access to a six link, then they can go and buy the game straight away. And I will put the games in the same order as I would prioritize them. So let's start with the Toxic Rain. And then Ballista, Attack Speed, if you don't have the Quill Rain, Vicious Projectiles, Swift Affliction, Void Manipulation, and as I said, if you do have the Quill Rain, then you can put Efficacy as your last gem. 
The next skill is the Causing Arrow with Mirage Archer, Onslaught and Vicious Projectiles. This setup will be for just the extra damage it provides and also giving us Onslaught. Later on we will get Frenzy which you can combine with Hex Touch and Despair and also Greater Multi Projectiles. For the Auras we are using Vitality and Clarity for some Life Region and Mana Region. And for our mobility skill, I personally prefer the dash skill and uh, combined with the second wind. Uh, you could change the dash for a flame dash if you want to. And you can get the steel skin to put on your left mouse button just to provide with some extra defense. And some skills to put on your half hand that you will need when you are going for the explosive arrow build. And those are determination and Grace, Defiance Banner, Precision, Explosive Arrow, and the Flammability Curse. So, next let's go over how we are going to build our passive tree. I am going to show you all the way from the 1 to the point where we are going to transition into the Explosive Arrow Ballistas. You can easily jump back using timestamps if you would need to go back anytime during your playthrough to look up on where you need to go. Okay, let's start from the beginning. First, you should go something like this. Pick up some life here, go down here, some damage and some extra life. Next, we go and grab the damage nodes and also master of arena for some more life region next go and pick up this node here for even more damage and once we've done that move all the way down here through the life nodes and start picking up the totem nodes here And after you're done with that, we have a long journey up. So we follow this road here. You can stop here to pick up some more life nodes if you would want to. Go all the way here. Grab this one for increased life. And also this one for 50 more flat life. All the way up here until we get to retribution. After that, we go and grab our last points. Go through the life wheel here and grab our ancestral bond and as well some of the total notes here for some more extra quality of life. And this will be pretty much what we are going through until we hit the end game. And after you've done that the tree should look something like this. And for our ascendancies you want to go first for the unstoppable hero and fortitude so we get permanent fortify really nice and after that you go for conqueror and also worthy foe i will talk a little bit more about where and how you should go before you change over to the ea ballistas later in the video so let's go over the leveling process starting with act one so for this character it was my league starter so i do not have any items or uniques to equip from the start once you get into the town go and check the vendor for some boots with some move speed on them and next we want to check if we could find an item with three green links the best option would be to have them on a helm or gloves Body armor works as well, but keep in mind that you will get a movement speed penalty if you have the body armor equipped. For the boot slots, we want to have that empty so we can easily swap if we should find another pair with some better movement speed on them. And last, a short bow so we can use our skill. And this one can also have three green links because we don't need to change that bow out in a very long time. 
After that, go and get the Cossack Arrow skill, and also if you can afford the Burning Arrow skill for some extra help for our single target. Once all of that is done, we are ready to start. First, go to the first quest and get our Quicksilver Flask. And once you turn in the quest for the flask, you can now also go and grab the Mirage Archer support and Onslaught support for your first three link. Should be Cossack Arrow, Mirage Archer and Onslaught. At this point you can go ahead and buy the Steel Skin as well if you want to. When you get to the ledge, you can go to the portal and teleport back to the town. And here you can now grab the Dash skill. You can also buy the Sharpenal Ballista skill if you would like to. This will help you quite a bit while fighting Brutus next. After you kill Brutus, you can teleport back to the town and grab the Vitality Aura, which will boost your life region. And you can also go and buy the Clarity Aura for some mana region. Once you reach the Cavern of Wrath, go to the portal and head back to town. You are now able to buy the Toxic Rain skill, which will be our main skill throughout the whole campaign until we get to around level 70 or so, and then change to Explosive Arrow Ballista instead. You also want to get the Ballista support now as well. At this point I usually put my Caustic Arrow with the Ballistas, and then use Self Cost, Toxic Rain, until we get the Faster Attack support from Act 2. Go and test out what you like the most. If you got the Quill Rain, go ahead and use the Toxic Rain with the Ballistas, as we do not need the Faster Attack support when we have that bow. Without the Faster Attack though, or a Quill Rain, from my own experience I feel that the Toxic Arrow takes just too long to hit the enemy, so that's why I like to wait so we can get a much smoother leveling experience. And moving on to Act 2. Start by go and kill all of the bandits for those extra skill points. When all of them are dead, run to the weaver, the big ass spider boss. And once you kill her, you will now get access to the faster attack support gem. So at this point I usually change over to the toxic arrow with ballista support and use caustic arrow as a self cost skill instead. If I have found a red green green linked item. Otherwise, I will just continue self cost Toxic Rain until I find an item with those links. With that quest unlocked, you can also go and buy Vicious Projectiles, which will boost our damage a lot. Keep in mind that if you are going with the Ballistas, all the loot dropped by the enemies will be dropped behind us now. So if you do not have a loot filter with sound notifications on, for let's say for currency or maybe linked items, you might miss a thing or two, so just keep that in mind. Once you're done with the Intruders in Black quest, you will get access to the Frenzy skill. This makes it so you are now able to get some Frenzy charges. Just shoot once in a while to try keep having the Frenzies up for some more attack speed and also more damage. When we get to Act 3, you will get access to the Grace skill after you complete the first quest. Also, then you can go and buy Determination if you would like to. You are not going to use them both until you hit the end game, so no rush buying them. It's just good to have them equipped on your offhand while we run around leveling, so they start getting, getting some levels. And once you get to the garden, move on to the library and do a Fixture of Fate quest. Once that's done, we'll unlock all of the skills that you can use here, and here we want to buy the Despair Curse for some more damage and also pick up the Explosive Arrow, Defiance Banner, Flame Ability Curse and equip them all to your offhand so we can start leveling it up while we do the campaign. On Act 4, after you kill Malachi, you will get access to the Greater Multi Productile Support. And after that you can also go and buy the Hex Attach Support with those two you can now link them with your Frenzy skill and also your Despair Curse making it so when you fire with the Frenzy skill you are not only getting Frenzy charges you will now also apply the Despair Curse on the enemies which do makes everything just feel a lot smoother. 
So, at this point, you have now reached Act 5 and you have unlocked all of the skills that you will need to get through the rest of the campaign all the way to the end game. When I get to the town in Act 5, I usually go and do my lab. But in this case, you don't really need to unless you are not planning to start with the Fortify nodes on the Champion Ascendancy. Once I get here, I will also stop doing all of the side quests for the extra skill points. This way makes it so when I get to maps, I will have quite a bit of extra skill points to help me respec on my tree. And with that said though, there isn't much that you need to change when you are going to change over to the EA Ballistas. So don't worry about it. Once you get to Act 6, you will get a penalty on your resist. Minus 30 to all of your resist to be more specific. At this point is a good way to start have a look on your gear a bit. You can go to your hideout and see if there is any items on you that you can put some extra resist on. If you got the open suffix. I recommend only going for the first resist which will, which will cost you one transmute. This might help you, makes it easier going through the rest of the campaign. And the rest of the act isn't really much to say. Just continue play as you did before. Some things to note is once you get to act... Eight, I usually do my crew lab, the second one. And also, if you did skip the first one, this time is a good time to do them both. When you're done with both your labs, you should go for Perma Fortify. Once you have that, you take less damage from hits. And you will also receive 20% attack speed and 500 to both armor and evasion. And you will also be stun immune, which is huge. The reason we didn't go for the first ascendancy before is because there isn't really any good ways for us to apply uh, fortify with this playstyle. Another tip is before you go ahead and kill Kitava on Act 10, you can go and do the Merciless Lab, uh, the third one. If you feel that you are not squishy enough, the reason for this is when you have killed Kitava you will get another penalty to your resist, so better doing it before you get even more nerfed. Once Kitava is dead and we reach maps, it's time to get all of our skill points quests that we might have missed or skipped. You can easily see by typing slash passives in the chat. And if it says zero to the left of the quest, it means that you have not completed that quest. And now you are at the end game, you have reached maps. What should we do? So before transitioning to Explosive Arrow Ballistas, we want to be able to grab the Fire Nodes tree that's down at the Duelist and another one that's over Ancestral Bond. And the reason is that without these two nodes, we do not get 100% Ignite chance, which is huge for this build. But with those two nodes and Combustion support, we will achieve this. You will also have to think about your accuracy at first, which can be kind of annoying. I'm using some of the bow talents tree providing accuracy. Also the bow mastery giving us 100 flat accuracy per green sockets of our bow, which is helpful at start. I also went and anointed accuracy on our amulet for some more flat and presented accuracy. Another item that we have is death rush ring, which provides a lot of good stats for us. It has chaos resist accuracy, life, and we also gain the onslaught on kill. You won't need all of these things though to get to 100% hit chance, but the reason I have so much is because of the new keystone, precise technique, which gives us more attack damage if the accuracy is higher than our life. The build got great clear and it's also very tanky, which is awesome for this league. We are using vitality, determination, Grace and also Defiance Banner, so we get a lot of defense from all of those auras. And we also have Precision for some extra accuracy. With our Ascendancy we also get Stun Immunity, so we cannot get stunned. We also get Permanent Fortify, which also reduces the damage from hits. And when we taunt enemies, they do less damage to us, and we do taunt all of the time with our third ascendancy. So it's just a really nice tanky build and awesome with explosive arrow because it is real enough to this league and a very good boss killer skill. I am doing another guide though talking more in depth of this build 
when I'm done with it. But for now, I will put up POB in the description if you would just like to check it out as it is right now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It do help out a lot. But with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!